Hello everyone, welcome to Healthy Kids Corner with me, Dr. Brooks. This week we're going to talk about MTHFR, which is something that I have been helping children and families with for quite a number of years. And this video is a long overdue. And the reason why is because this is just a very complicated topic. So today I'm going to use this video as an opportunity to kind of do an intro of what MTHFR is. And then perhaps in future videos, we'll kind of go through some of the logistics on what to stay away from, etc. The first thing is, what is MTHFR? Um, it is methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, and it is a polymorphism, or otherwise called a SNP in the genetics. Easy blood test to do. You can also order the 23andMe test for $99, which is a saliva test. What that will tell you if you have MTHFR as well as other polymorphisms that I myself, when I have a patient, love to know the whole picture, if you will. So let's talk a little bit about, I'm gonna back up before we talk about MTHFR, and I wanna talk to you about what nutrigenomics is. And this is a newer, at least for some of you, form of looking at the genetics. So UC Davis actually does a great job at defining what it is. So I always like to use their definition. They basically say that nutritional genomics or nutrigenomics is a study of how foods affect your genes and how individual genetic differences can affect the way we respond to nutrients. So in foods that we eat, correct? So diet, as we know with children, is so important. What we feed them, what we don't, what we stay away from, because our food, in essence, is poisonous in a lot of ways, right? So how do we pick the right diets for our children? And this is just a way that we can do that, as well as for ourselves, of course. So nutrigenomics has received a lot of attention recently because of the potential for preventing, mitigating, or aiding chronic disease. So it's become a really popular topic because people are realizing, wow, there is something we can actually do. The first tenet is under certain circumstances and in some individuals, diet can be a serious risk factor for a number of diseases. So we wanna pay specific attention to what is going on in your genetic makeup that we may be able to tell you as doctors that you need to stay away from. The second thing is common dietary chemicals can act on the human genome and either directly or indirectly alter gene expression or structure. So again, just because you have MTHFR or other polymorphisms doesn't necessarily mean they're going to express themselves, right? Or the structure is going to be altered or changed. So again, this is more of a precautionary mechanism, right? And how do we get ahead of it instead of waiting till it's broken? The third tenet that they talk about is the degree in which diet influences the balance between healthy and disease states may depend on the individual's genetic makeup. So I always tell parents, I wish that there was a protocol that I could have for every child that comes here with MTHFR, because I will tell you, it's mm, somewhere in the 90% of what I test uh, when I test kids are positive for one of the mutations. So, and this is because it's super common. It's not a rare thing to have, it's very common, but how it affects your body is very, very different for each person. I have siblings, I take care of families of two and three, and each of them, express it differently. The fifth and last one is dietary interventions based on the knowledge of nutritional requirements for the individual patient, their nutritional status, and their genotype can be used to prevent, mitigate, or help with chronic illness. And I think this is super powerful. So, I don't know, seven years ago I would have said you were crazy if I ever thought I was going to be looking at this in practice. But now I realize this is such an amazing opportunity to see the genetic makeup of what you have going on from a methylation and detoxification standpoint to really get in front of the moving train. The youngest patient that I've tested to date was about 20 weeks old. So, I mean, just imagine for that parent how amazing they're going to have in an opportunity to really make a difference in their child's life and make better decisions than they would have if they found out when they were six, seven, or eight, or perhaps never found out, correct? When it comes to nutrigenomics, I am a big fan of early intervention, knowing what the testing is saying, because I think testing is the key to your wellness. Once you know what you're dealing with, you can do something to help the body function better. So genetics can't be fixed. They are what they are. We are who we are but we can support the system and we know where it's broken so that we can potentially prevent further damage and help patch up what's going wrong. 
So let's get into what is MTHFR, right? That's how we started this. So like I said, it's methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, and this is a genetic mutation or often called a polymorphism. This was first discovered when we started doing the Human Genome Project. And in 1995, we discovered the C677T, and in 2001, we discovered the A1298C. People that have this mutation have an interruption in the methylation pathway. And what that means is they have a reduced ability to process folic acid into something that their body can utilize. So the methylation pathway is super important. It's responsible for close to 20 processes in the body. For example, it turns off and on genes, so it's important in gene regulation. It helps to build neurotransmitters, so those children with ADD, ADHD, hyperactivity, issues with focus, it, it, it can affect those things. Also, it processes hormones like estrogen, which is really important. And then of course it helps in the process of chemicals um, and compounds in the body because it has a lot to do with how your body's detoxifying. So those detoxification pathways can be altered, changed, or impaired in some way. Of course it has a lot to do with building immune cells, particularly your T cells and your NK cells. So this is something that if you have the SNP, and I actually have it myself, it is really something that you need to look deeper into and know, am I being affected by this? And how am I being affected? So that you know where to go and how to get help. So like I said before, MTHFR is very common. About 45% of the population is walking around with one copy, that of either the C677T or the A1298C. And we are coming out with research all the time about what, what is this affecting and who is at risk? And I would tell you that there has been research to link MTHFR, cancer, chronic fatigue syndrome, Down syndrome, autism, heart disease, irritable bowel, rheumatoid arthritis, migraines, bipolar, depression, the list goes on and on. So in some ways, you'll see this as an adult or be saying, wow, maybe this is what's going wrong with me. The other end is some parents are tested when they have fertility issues because it can cause infertility in women. So when I say autism and ADD, you're hard pressed to find a child with either of those diagnoses that do not have an issue with detoxification pathways, behavior, mood, etc. So this is a pretty powerful link that we've been able to make and there are, like I said, things that you can do on a nutrigenomics front. You can find doctors in your area. I'm in Texas and there aren't many of us on the grand scale of, of life at this point that deal a lot with this, but you can go to mthfr.net and that's Dr. Ben Lynch's website. You can find providers on his website, so you can look there. I know a lot of parents are coming from out of state and such, and that's perfectly fine if that's the decision that you make because that might be what you have to do. So again, this is something that you'll want to take a look at, you'll want to know more about, and it's more of a marathon, not a race. So you'll do some reading about it and realize that you really have to have gut repair done finito, healthy, before you move on to methylation. So please do not find out that your child has MTHFR and start to make changes on your own, meaning do not supplement them. And I would say proceed very cautiously with leucovorin, which is a prescription methylfolate on the market currently. The, the smallest dose that they can give is five milligrams, which is equal to 5,000 micrograms. The RDA for folate, just so you know, is 400 micrograms. So it is a very, very large dose and many people have reported feeling terrible when they take it. So there's other things that have to go into helping you with MTHFR other than just giving you methylfolate. So please know and please be aware of that. You potentially make your child more sick and feel worse as well as yourself if you're treating by yourself. So please, please get some help, get some guidance so that you can get well. If you wanna get some more information, I do offer monthly webinars for parents and clinicians. You can sign up for those at dramberbrooks.com. You can also follow us on Facebook at Whole Child Wellness and on Twitter at Whole Child, the number four U. My website to my private practice is mychildwellness.com. You can get lots of great research there. I have an MTHFR page up on our website with lots of studies and research that link directly so that you can do some reading if you choose. So I wish you the best. Please find some guidance and help with this. You really, really can make things worse. So get some help and be well. See you soon. Bye.